When Jesus said, you'll be my witnesses, you know what the word witness is in Greek? It's the word martis, which is martyr. You will be my martyrs. That means I need to be, we need to be ready to fight. In the Fujian province of China, uh, it's still illegal to be Catholic. And so this man, he was Catholic and his family were Catholic. And so what they would do is they would have mass in secret in their homes. They put their lives on the line just to have the Eucharist. So they have sentries outside. They have mass in the middle of the night. There's sentries outside watching for the officials to come. They had mass one night. And at the end of mass, the sentries rushed in and said, officials are on their way. So everyone scattered. The priests ran off. The family ran off. All these other families ran off. But it was the, this guy's house, so he, couldn't, he didn't have anywhere to run off to. So they burst into his home, and they arrested him. And they took him to wherever they held him, and they started to torture him for three to four weeks. Day after day, night after night, they would strip him naked. They would take a, a jury-rigged cattle prod that was rigged to give up to a million volts. They put it on different parts of his body. Say, just tell us where the priest is. You can go back to your family. Tell us where the priest is, and you can go home. But this man, strapped to this thing, getting electrocuted all over his body, getting burned all over his body, he knew that if he told where the priest was, his neighbors, his family, no one would have mass for who knows how long. He just loved the Eucharist so much that he's like, no, I just, I just, I can't, I can't give it up. I can't say no to this. I can't betray the Eucharist. After three, four weeks of torturing him straight, they were like, we can't break this man. And so they let him go. Pretty soon, as soon as he could, actually, he arranged passage to the United States and he moved to a, a city in this country. This is just a couple years ago. And he got here. When he got here, he was so overjoyed because, among other things, he got to go to Mass every single day. He got to go to Mass on Sundays, and no one was arresting him. But he also realized something pretty quickly. He realized that in America, if you work harder, you make more. And he said, I want to give more to my family. I want to do more. I want to accomplish more. I want to be more in this country. And so pretty quickly, he didn't have enough time to go to daily Mass. And as time went on, he occasionally would skip Sunday Mass. Another year went by, he'd only go to Mass on Christmas and Easter. And when I first heard this story, that Easter, the man didn't even go to Mass. I don't want you to miss this point. What communism couldn't do, what torture couldn't do, what electrified cattle prods couldn't do, our culture could do, and it didn't even have to try. The torture could not break this man's love for the Eucharist, and our culture was able to strip this man's love for the Eucharist, and it didn't even need to try it. You guys, we're in a fight, and it is time to fight. It's time to witness. And this is exactly what the church needs right now. This is the last thing. This is not a new story. This is an old story. We are exactly where the church has always been. In the year 33, at the very beginning of Christianity, when everything looked like it was over and Jesus was dead and he's alive again, there's Peter and there's Paul, there's Mary Magdalene, there's Mary, the mother of God. They came together and they were witnesses. 500 years later, you have the church that gets all big and fat and comfortable and the church gets corrupted and starts falling into disrepair. And so what does God do? God raises up someone like Augustine and like Benedict and like Scholastica. And all of a sudden the church gets renewed because there's people who are like, no, listen, if Jesus is who he says he is, I am who he says I am. I want to be his witness. I'm not just going to believe in him. I'm going to live like him. I'm going to look like him. But then, and the church was renewed. And then another 400, 500 years later happened. And the church again gets bloated. and gets comfortable. and gets soft. Falls into disrepair. And so what's, what's God do? He raises up people like Francis and Dominic and Claire. And all of a sudden, it's the people who says, I don't just want to believe in Jesus. I want to belong to Jesus. I want to look like Jesus. And I want to live like Jesus. And the church is renewed. Again, centuries pass. It's the 1500s. And the church is just bloated and comfortable and falling apart. What does God do? He raises up St. Charles Borromeo, St. John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, Catherine of Siena. And what happens is the church gets renewed from the inside because there's people in the church who say, enough, I have courage. All it takes is one person with courage. I'm not gonna be like everyone else. I'm gonna be like him. And here we are 500 years later and the church is comfortable and the church is bloated and the church is falling into disrepair. And God will do what he always does. He will raise up saints. This is the age of the martyrs. This is the age of men and women with the courage and the freedom 
to look like Jesus and to live like Jesus. And those people will be renewed by Jesus. And now if people who are renewed by Jesus will renew the church and the, re and the renewed church will renew the world. It is time to get to work.